Bye. Welcome to Cryptocurrency Blockchain News, your daily cryptocurrency blockchain aggregated news show on YouTube. Look, look, it's going to be drinking, smoking, and swearing. So look, you've been warned, because here I come in three, look, <laughs> two, look, <laughs> one. Bye. Welcome, everybody. Black, white, gay, straight, Christian, Muslim, Jew. Welcome. My name is Shamar Clark. Welcome to Cryptocurrency Blockchain News, the greatest show on earth, the greatest show in the multiverse. Bye. All right, everybody. Happy 2020. Hold on. Hold on. Let me give it. Look, look. Happy New Year, everyone. Bye. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you had a good time. Bye. Yeah. All right. Now let's get back to our money. <laughs> that's my little, that's my two seconds of festivity. Yes. Festive. All right, guys. We have a great show for you today. Wow. From what I could scrape up, you have to remember there's no politicians working now. So we don't have any onboardings. We don't have any regulations. We don't have any legislation. Oh, and the, the companies aren't working. We don't have any onboarding. So. I had to scrape this one together, but Shamar's always on duty, so look, look. Let's check it out. Whoa, this the speaker was really super loud there. Okay, there we go. Bang, 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 bang. All right, all right. Ah, okay, okay, there we go. I must have tweaked the thing there. All right, guys, so look. I own a network down for 15 hours. No big deal. No big deal. Uh, we're going to talk about that. Uh, crypto. Uh, crypto profits not taxable in South Korea. Dang on, we're going to talk about them in South Korea. And then institutions are getting comfortable with crypto because of the compliance. Ugh, like what we talked about, right? They're only allowed to come here when there's regulations, and and they're only allowed to invest in. You know, remember they have to do due diligence on where they invest in everything. You know what I mean? It's not just hey man, well I traded it and oh well I lost. Nah, they got to do due diligence, and so they have to trade with compliant services and so we're going to talk about that lock, lock, lock. let's go bye yeah. oh hold on though bang all right so let's talk about cryptocurrency blockchain news the channel for a second though yeah so you saw last night i put up the new trailer i put up the new trailer right it wasn't that one where i'm like hi everyone we're going to talk about cryptocurrency we're going to talk about blockchain <laughs> yeah i gave them the poll bye look right and then I put the extended trailer on the end of the first trailer. So if they really want to know what this, this site is about, right, about who I am, what my philosophy is, what the hell I'm even doing here and what this channel is about. And so we gave them a good, we gave them a good uh, extended yesterday. So that's number one. Bang, that's nice. New information for a new year, right? Get everyone knowing. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to start this year is, I'm going to have a playlist, and I'm going to start explaining stuff in the playlist. So you know how I explain to you guys custody? Man, it takes me like 10 minutes to explain custody. Well, I'm just going to explain custody in a video, and I'm going to put in a playlist. And I'm going to say to everybody, all right, so if you don't know what custody is, Google, uh, search it in Investopedia, and also go to that video, and it'll tell you what custody is, right? So they're going to have to do a little bit more self-learning, right? I'm not going to sit here and yap, yap about basic shit like what a futures contract is or what custody services are and stuff like that. You know, we're done. We're done holding everybody's hand so closely now. We're in 2020 now. We're about to get into money here, baby. We're about to get into the big stuff, brothers. Remember this, Q1 right now. All those things that are coming online. Fuck, I think next week there's some things coming online, right? Isn't, um, I think CME's options come online next week. Um, uh, there's a couple other things. Luck, luck, man. So we're having a great time and a good year, so... Uh, that's the update. So I'm going to have little, uh, so we did the thing. We did the, 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 uh, what is that called? The trailer yesterday. And then we did an extended trailer. So now people know, well, who I am, what the show's about, what the hell, <laughs> how I, how I roll around here. And, uh, and, um, yeah. And so then we're going to have those tidbits. Like I said, the little lessons, yeah, so we'll grow this channel a little bit, make it a little bit more, I guess, user friendly, right? Or something like that. I guess you could call it or something. All right, look, look, let's bounce back. Yeah, let's begin. Let's begin, brothers. Bye. Look, look. Oh, yes. Refresh. All right. $7,163 is our Bitcoin price. And when I left you on the 31st, but, uh, so it was like two days ago. Actually, I guess that's technically three days ago because now it's the second. It was set 7,280. So we went down 100 and 
Seventeen dollars. All right. Look, look. Top ten of the day, brothers. Still the usual suspects. Come on into twenty twenty. Top ten of the day: Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, Tether, Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin, EOS, Binance Coin, Bitcoin SV, and Tezos. Let's look at the market moves of the day. Same as two thousand nineteen. Single digits up to single digits down. 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 Two. Single digits up. Two. Single digits down. All right. Let's look who lost money on here. All right, let's look who lost money to anything on here you like. You go get it because it is on sale. Bye. Top 10 losers of the day. Luna, Educare, B Systems, IXEC, RLC, Centrality, Solve, Made Safe Coin, Quant, ABVC Coin, and Bitcoin SV. Let's look who made money today, brothers and sisters. Look. Top 10 gainers of the day. Seal, Decentraland, Cryptarium, Bitcoin, Nexo, Matic Network, Burge, Theta, Swipe, and Monero. Let's look at total market cap today, brothers. What do we got? 190.5 billion. 190.5 billion on the day. Well, in total market cap, not on the day. Uh, so, and when I left you on the 31st, we were at 193.4. So we've gone down, what is that? 2.9 billion? I don't know, something like that. Around there, around 2 billion. All right, look. Let's look at 25, 24 hour volume of the day. 25 hour volume. Huge. Uh, 62. Po oh, no, we're going down again. 62.9. Well, it's the beginning of the year, so I'm expecting volumes are pretty small. People are still sobering up. <laughs> look, look. <laughs> so, when I left you on the 31st, uh, we were at uh, 70.8 in volume. We're now at 62.9. So we could just call that, what do we call it? It's called a billion down. All right, that's it. We call that the uh, sober, the sobering effect. The, uh, we call that the, uh, we'll call it the, uh, the New Year's lag. Uh, New Year's lag. All right. New Year's lag. Boop. All right. Look, look. All right, let's move on. Bang, Iota. So this isn't a big deal, guys. I mean, to tell you the truth, I wasn't even going to, I've had this story for a few days, but I wasn't even going to read it because it's no big deal because they already have the, the fix and everything. And so, but, so I got to tell you, there's, you know, there's, you know, these guys aren't updating their crypto sites and everything. So, oh, these fucking bugs in here. Look at, all right, all right. Oh, I'm going to get these motherfuckers. Look. And so I wasn't even really going to say it, but. <laughs> I wanted to have a show. I didn't want to be like, well, guys, you know, yeah, you know, ain't nothing to talk about, so we'll do it next week. So I scraped it together. So um, I owned a network down for 15 hours. What happened? So I'm going to tell you what happened. We'll read about what happened. And it's not a big deal because they already have their, um, their thing is people complain it's centralized. And I guess in a way this sort of proved it is. But they already they already made up this thing called Quarterside to fix this. So we're gonna. Uh, anyways, I'll show you. All right. The Auto Network has experienced a downtime of over 15 hours. As users have reported, it was not possible to send transactions. Specifically, as David Schoenstable described, there was a problem with the coordinator of IOTA. And all right, now I'll just keep reading. The coordinator is currently still responsible for the full confirmation of the transactions. And that's why people say it's centralized, right? As a result, the IOTA Tangle Network came to a halt. In the meantime, the problem has been solved. If, user, if users are running an IRI node, 
They have to upgrade to version 1.8.3. So problem solved. And actually, okay, I'm just going to read this to you. So the bug was minor. David Sonstebo, co-founder of IOTA, wrote about the bug that there is no reason to panic. In his opinion, it was only a minor problem. The situation is uncomfortable because the timing is annoying as many developers are on vacation. <laughs> so it happened just the other day. And, uh, well, they're all on vacation, so... However, in his opinion, such problems were to be expected in the run-up to Cordicide. Sorry. To the Cordicides. Whatever the bug is, there's no reason to panic over such a minor issue pre-Cordicide. This is exactly why Cordicide takes time. You cannot run it until all possible kinks have been ironed out. The timing of this event is unfortunate, in that it is the holiday season, and thus quite a lot of team members are off and enjoying well-deserved time with their families. So within the crypto community, the issues has not been taken up so loosely and easily. Admittedly, the Tangle was still functional, and all stored data was secure. The only problem was that no new transactions could be confirmed. Nevertheless, the downtime raised doubts about the stability of the IOTA network. There's some bugs in here, man. Flies. Two of them. Fuck, are big ones. Um, a downtime of more than 15 hours is a problem that is very critical, especially in the corporate sector. As is well known, IOTA would like to gain a foothold in this market. On the other hand, even Bitcoin had two downtimes in its entire history since 2009. CVE 2010-51, whatever that is, man. Uh, eight hours and 27 minutes. And then CVE 2013, blah, 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 six hours and 20 minutes, resulting in an uptime of 99%. So when you look at it that way, settle down. Things up and running. So Sonstebo also wrote that the situation is not very different from spam attacks, which also make transactions impossible and can also bring the network to a standstill. Temporarily unavailable transaction confirmation. Temporarily unavailable transaction confirmation due to a bug in coordinator, is something I'd categorize as minor. It's really no different from periods where the networks have been spammed and thus real transactions slowed down significantly. Oh, this is so annoying. Um, it's unfortunate due to the timing. Otherwise, it would be cleared up quicker, but such is life sometimes. Meaning if those guys weren't, if those guys weren't on vacation, you know, the thing would have only, you know, IOTA would have only been down for... Oh, oh, probably an hour or two while well, the code monkeys punched out a fix. So on GitHub, the bug fix in IRI node version 1.8.3 is described below. There is an edge case where IRI didn't account for a transaction that was shared between two distinct bundles. Once it marked it as counted in one bundle, it was ignored for the next bundle. This leads to a corrupt ledger state. All right, all right. I hope you guys understood all that. <laughs> so, but this is the thing, coordicide. And so... We read about Cordicide here, but uh, we read about that was way in Q1. Yeah, they already knew about this. Like people, I told you guys about this already. People have been complaining about IOTA because of that coordinator thing. Oh, here it is. Okay, okay. I said it last year, but way back in 2019, I said it. Remember that? Way back then? <laughs> Two days ago. All right. Just fucking around. See these flies? Holy. Why are they hanging out in here with me? Go fly around the house or something. Uh, anyways, coordinate Cordicide will finally solve the problem. I hate bugs. I hate insects. Um, the topic of the, cordis, the coordinator in the IOTA network has been a much discussed topic for quite some time. Yeah, dude, people complaining, complaining, complaining about the coordinator. <coughs> Due to, and I guess if you're one of these people who care so much about, you know, decentralization in that i guess you have a point that coordinator thing was the central hub right even though all these uh, iota how it works the machines also do transaction um calculations or whatever but this coordinator thing was the final thing that verified it all right and so anyway here comes quarter side so let's read um uh, for quite some time due to the component due to this component the network is currently still highly centralized as all transactions have to be confirmed through it, right? So that's the thing about, about IOTA. The tangle is infinitely scalable, right? 
You can put any amount of nodes on it. Yeah, scalability infinite. Like literally, I'm not just saying that to make a point. It's infinitely scalable. The machines actually do uh, stuff on it. Like, um, I don't know, like calculate the transactions or whatever. And then they all send it to that thing, the coordinator in the end. So it'll like, if two nodes are transferring data, da -da 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 -da, they transfer it and then they send it to this coordinator and then it verifies everything. And so Cordicide is going to change that. So let's read. Um, as all transactions have to be confirmed. So as the current bug shows, the coordinator also makes the IOTA network as a single point of failure. That's true. The coordinator failed. The whole shit failed. Vulnerable to network downtime. If the central component fails, the entire network is down. You can't have that. You can't have that. That's not cool. So the elimination of the coordinator is therefore essential to avoid future failures caused by the single point of failure. Earlier this year, the Iota Foundation therefore also announced that the coordinator is to be removed using a new technology called Coordicide. However, development will still take some time. According to the roadmap for 2020, the test network for Cordicide is scheduled to be completed by the end of 2020. Yeesh. Oh, a whole year of this shit? All right, well, that's how it's going to go down. But anyways, that's IOTA's first ever, I guess you could call it blackout. Um, and it's back, and no big deal. And like I said, this Cordicide thing is going to take care of all that. So, and like I said, I'm really only reading this because, well, we didn't have many stories to read. So, bang, wanted to get you something. So look, let's move on. Bang. Government confirms that crypto profits are not taxable in South Korea. That's pretty interesting shit. <clears throat> That's pretty interesting shit. So if you're a South Korean, I don't think I have any South Korean viewers, but if you are, man, you better make that money now, son. <laughs> why you still why you still get away with it? Whoops. Yeah. So Read on, brothers. Um, crypto gains are not subject to taxation. So, yo, motherfucker. Mm. Oh, I got him. Got that fucker. Oh, these fat flies, they're slow. Yeah. All right, guys, look. Sorry about that. You see him? He flew right there on my shit. Ah. The South Korean Ministry of Economy and Finance, which oversees the country's economic policy, has stated officially that individual investors' crypto trading profits cannot be taxed under the current tax law. Current tax law. <laughs> That's the operative word. Current tax law. Yes, tax laws change in a whim. Yes, you know how the... That's why we... Bang! That's why we watch these politicians... You're always changing stuff, all right? So for now, you're good to go, South Korea. Not all capital gains from financial investments are subject to taxation in South Korea. And taxes cannot be imposed on income from activities that are not explicitly defined under the tax law. Oh, I see. Oh, so they, they write the new tax laws for every single little thing. Okay, so we do it differently here in America, and I'm sure probably where you are in Europe or Canada, wherever you are, we write laws where everything is taxed. And unless we write an exemption, well, you got to pay that tax. <laughs> so South Korea does it the opposite. You can get away with not paying any tax unless we specifically, right? Like what it says right here. Right? They're not, cannot be posed on income for activities that are not explicitly defined. <laughs> That's pretty interesting. That's interesting. Yeah. You know, like what well, you understand what I'm saying, right? In your country, probably English speaking countries. You're probably in Europe, Australia, Canada, America, right? Our tax laws are just, this is the tax, right? And then they, they make exemptions for things, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Anyways, you get what I'm saying, right? All right. Since the term virtual currency or any other term it is known by is not included anywhere in the tax law, its transactions cannot be taxed. Bye. Oh, yeah. The ministry clarified on December 30th. So the ministry declared, oh, my bad, sorry. The ministry declared on December 30th, profits for individual versus asset transactions are not listed income and are not taxable. Oh, yeah. But 
And here we go. And that's what I told you. Yeah, the current law. <laughs> Look. But amendments are being discussed. While individual crypto pr- profits are currently tax-free in South Korea, the Ministry of Economy and Finance have been pushing to amend the law so they can be taxed. <laughs> Look. Look. Get your crypto on fast, quickly, South Korea. However, some major decisions must be made before the tax law can be amended. Exactly. This will be a while. You know, laws, I mean, I don't know how they work in South Korea, but, you know, laws take a big, a long time. And, like, tax laws here in America are a big deal, huge deal. And so, you know, usually they only come out at the beginning of a president's term, and then they don't talk about it again <laughs> till the new president comes around or till the next, the next presidential term. They, here in America, when the new president comes, bang, everyone talks about taxes real quick, da-da-da, does the tax stuff, and that's that. They shut the fuck up and just ride. And so uh, we'll see. I don't know how they do it there in Korea. <laughs> so uh, who's this guy talking here? Who's this guy talking? Emphasizing that cryptocurrency would need legal status before it can be added to the law. The ministry elaborated. Oh, so the ministry says, yeah, I just got to find out who's saying what. Yeah. Who's got the authority to say what? So this is the ministry. We're Oh, so they're telling you right here. We are preparing a taxation plan for virtual assets by comprehensively reviewing the taxation of major countries, consistency with accounting standards and trends in international discussions to prevent money laundering. All right, so they're going to get, let's get real. I mean, FATF compliant probably. Well, but also with their own tax twist to this thing, right? So like what he said, we're reviewing, you know, the taxation of major countries. In other words, I told you this is a copycat world. Last uh, 2018, I used to always tell you that. It's a copycat world. So we're going to look at what America's doing, what Europe's doing, and copy. So look, look. The National Tax Service targets foreign traders using domestic crypto exchanges. So look, look, foreigners. Oh, yeah, if you go up into South Korea and think you're just going to make some money with some crypto, tax-free. Oh, you got another thing coming, son. You got another thing coming. Yes. The South Koreans might be generous with their own citizens. <laughs> they might have a little leniency on their own citizens. Fortunately for you foreign motherfuckers. Yeesh. <laughs> That's how it goes, brothers. That's how countries are. Oh, yeah, we protect our citizens. But any fuckstick wants to come around here and make some money in our backyard? Oh, you getting taxed, son. You're going to pay for the privilege, son. That's how it goes, brothers. That's how it goes. Because those foreigners, well, they don't vote. So who gives a fuck? You can tax the shit out of them. Your own citizens, you have to be a little more gentle. <laughs> Probably have an election season coming up soon. Well, it is a democracy. <laughs> so you got to be a little chilled out with your own citizens. But those foreigners, fuck them. Watch this. <laughs> While domestic crypto transactions are not taxed, the country's National Tax Service has imposed 80.3 billion won, 69.5 million, in withholding tax on trades conducted by foreign customers of BitHub, Korea, one of the largest crypto exchanges in the country. Every foreigner on Bit. <laughs> but you got to pay, son. Oh, you thought you were just going to come over here and use one of our exchanges? And just have a good old time? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So look. Bithum can pay the 80.3 billion won and afterwards collect the amount from its foreign clients. But practically, it's impossible. You see what? You see what they're saying? It's the foreigners that have to pay the tax. This guy's saying, Bithum pays the tax, and then they have to go collect the money from the, from the foreigners on their exchange. Yeah, well, what if the guy on the exchange like, oh, fuck this, closes his account? Well, you can't get any money from that guy, right? So let me reread that. Bithum can pay the 80.3 billion won and afterwards collect the amount from its foreign clients. But practically, it's impossible. Of course, if I'm a foreign client on Bithum, and you're like, hey, Shamari, man. Yo, man, you, got, you owe me, you owe me, you owe, you owe us 10 Gs, dog. Can you please uh, deposit that? You're like, Yo, go fuck yourself, homeboy. <laughs> you, go, you go fuck yourself with all that, dude. I'll give you a penny. In fact, I'm about to close this account and just head over here to Binance. Look, 
you're pissing me off now. <laughs> so <laughs> that's true. Listen, I always pay Uncle Sam his money. You can't fuck with Uncle Sam. Here in America, his name's Uncle Sam. If you're new, well, or if you're not American, is what I mean. Uncle Sam is this fictional character we have who controls America, right? It, America is his house, and we all just live in it. His name is Uncle Sam. Let me tell you something, brothers. You don't want to fuck with Uncle Sam's money. <laughs> no, sir. I'm telling you, that's real, though. That's real. Like, you really don't. Because the IRS, boy, they will put liens on your homes, on your this, on your that. Like, they're ruthless here in America. Like, in Canada, if you don't, I, you know, I grew up in Toronto, Canada. <laughs> so, you know, hence, uh, anyway, whatever. But, you know, in Canada, if you don't pay your taxes, the government's like, they send you a little letter. Hey, you know, you owe us some money. Uh, can you please come in and work this out? No, 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 like that. Yeah, you know, like, they'll give you even, like, well, if you can't pay it all, you know, just pay us in installments, blah, blah, blah. You know, they're nice to the citizens. Fuck that. Here in America, the IRS is like, look, buddy, you owe us this much money. Oh, you have that restaurant over there? Well, we're going to take it out of your fucking restaurant. But if you take it out of my restaurant, I'll go bankrupt. Fucking tough shit, buddy. Yeah, man, America is ruthless. When it comes to ta taxes, Uncle Sam doesn't fuck around. Right? He doesn't fuck around for the regular guy. The regular guy has to pay his taxes. Oh, but the rich man, oh, he gets to put his shit offshore here, offshore there, and trust there. Oh, yeah. All sorts of little crazy little retirement vehicles in the Seychelles and the Virgin Islands. Well, let me tell you something. You're a regular man, middle class man. Let's try to make ends meet. I don't know what you got. Maybe you got a little restaurant that, 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 that's sustaining you and your family. Maybe you got a little contract company. You know, you I don't know. You're like a worker bee, but you hire a bunch of other worker bees and you go fix people's homes and that. What do you call contractors and that? Oh, yeah, you fucking owe taxes. Uncle Sam will shut you down. All right. <laughs> so so I guess what I'm saying is that's why I do not fuck around. I don't fuck around. When the thing comes, <laughs> here, I get out of here. I don't want to see you again. I just get it over with. Bang. I rip the Band-Aid off. Bang. Just get it over with. Move on safely. Safely. Oh, yeah, he'll take everything. Yeah, yeah your house. Your business. Yeah, uh. They'll fucking uh, just freeze your bank accounts and take that shit. Oh, yeah. Do you know if you don't pay your taxes here in America that they will take your college degrees from you? Yes. I know. This is a weird one, and I know a lot of people, even Americans, don't know about it. If you're a lawyer and you don't pay your taxes, oh, no, it's not the taxes, is it? Oh, my bad. That's student loans, student loans. Okay, okay. That's a different thing. That's a different thing. Sorry. Well, I'll just tell you anyway. I already said it. If you don't pay your student loans here in America and you're a lawyer, yeah, bang, they take your license from you. Well, how the fuck's this guy going to pay you now? <laughs> He's really not going to be able to pay you. Anyway, that's a whole other thing. All right, let's get back. Luck. Luck. Let's get back to it, brothers. Let's get back to our crypto stuff here. <sighs> that's American taxation, though. That shit's real. Kim Wu. A tax person universe soul was quoted by Korea Jonghan Daily as saying, oh, that's the thing about making Bidhum pay for the taxes for their people and they get the money back. So Bidhum reportedly has not been withholding taxes from its foreign customers and is preparing to file a lawsuit <laughs> against the... Actually, I didn't read this article. Well, I didn't read down to this part. I saw the tax... Like I said, there was no stories tonight. So pff, I was like, great, this one will work. So this is that's why I'm. you see the reaction. It's hilarious. Uh, so they're withholding, <laughs> they're planning to file a lawsuit against the NTS over a groundless tax imposed on the company, local media reported Sunday. It is true, though. That is a little unfair. I mean, the taxes are for those fuck sticks, you know, the foreigners using it. Right? You got to go chase them down. But I understand from the government's point of view as well, is the government says, well, you should be withholding those taxes from them. In other words, you be the tax collector for us, right? Bithum becomes the tax collector for us. You withhold the taxes from your clients, and at the end of the year, give us what they owe us. <laughs> I see it from both sides. All right. The issue of categorizing crypto profits is capital gains. That's what I think they are. So that's exactly what I think they are, and that's what I'm waiting for. Like, So you guys know I'm a Forex trader. My money makes me money. I don't have a nine-to-five job. Uh, so 
my my taxes are called capital gains. In other words, most of you, I'm sure, you have a job and you pay what's called payroll tax. Every fucking two weeks, you got to get that tax out of your thing, right? Well, I uh, how it works for us traders and you know market guys is we make the money for the whole year and then the government says, all right, you made that much? Yeah, you owe me that much, all right? And then we got to up that money. Yeah, you got to up that money. You better not go fucking spend that money. You better pay Uncle Sam, brother. So you better have some, uh, you know, some funds in reserve to pay your taxes when you're a trader, right? Because you don't know how much you have to pay. You don't know. I mean, if you're, I mean, if you're a professional, obviously, but I'm not professional like that. I don't keep track of every penny I make. I just wait till the end of the year, give it to my accountant, and then he's like, "All right, you owe that much." And then I'm like, "All right, well, here's the check, you know, bang." <laughs> That's called capital gains. In other words. Capital gains tax. In other words, I'm a person whose capital makes him money, who, whose capital gains more money. So that's called capital gains tax. And that's what I think. And so what I'm telling you guys is, personally, I think that's what crypto should be cap, uh, taxed as, capital gains. Yeah, it's a, it, <clears throat> I put in money to a market. It made me this much money. All right, you tax me on the profits, the gains, right? Um. That's where I hope it goes. I hope we get capital gains taxed. Well, actually, property tax would be even better, but that's not going to happen, probably. Maybe for your Bitcoin and your Ethereum, but the rest of this, you know, you're going to pay capital gains, nigga. Look, the NTS has categorized foreign traders' capital gains as miscellaneous income. The category, which includes irregular income, such as rewards of lottery winning or lottery winnings. Korea, Jun Gang Daily, detailed. Oh, Korea Jun Yang Daily Detailed. In contrast, earnings from real estate or stock trading are categorized as capital gains. Exactly. Noting that capital gains taxes is collected for every deal, but tax for miscellaneous income is taxed once each year. All right, so that's how they do it. Like, so that's how they do it in, in Korea. So they're saying that each deal in Korea, how they do it is each real estate deal Bang, you got to pay the tax right there. Every stock trade, bang, you got to pay the tax right there. So it's collected for, the capital gains is collected for every deal. But miscellaneous income is collected once a year. And so that's how it is here in America. Like, I don't pay tax on every fucking trade I make. I, I, I pay tax on what the end result of the year is. So if I made 70 G this year, all right, well, I have to pay tax on that, Right. I don't have to pay tax on each individual one, right? Um, yeah, you understand? Uh, it's just collected once a year. So, yeah, and I pay it once a year when everyone else pays their tax, right? Not every single fucking trade. That's weird. Putting in from cryptocurrency trades of the capital gains would have required the government to receive every trading record for do from domestic exchanges. And that's what they do here. Every trading record. My Forex trades, every single trade, there's a trading record of it, right? I download it once a year, give it to my accountant. And I think that's how it goes on Coinbase. I'm not going to bullshit you. I haven't paid taxes on any of my crypto yet. Well, because I haven't cashed in any of it yet. So I figure, well, look, Uncle Sam, you deserve no money from me yet because, well, I haven't realized any gains on any of this yet. Well, I haven't cashed out the gains. Oh, and that's the difference about America, too. Yeah, let me explain that. Yeah, you pay on what's called realized gains, realized gains. So maybe I have, I don't know, I don't know, a thousand Microsoft shares. Boom, and I and they, they've went up a million dollars. Well, as long as I hodl those Microsoft shares, I don't have to pay tax on those gains yet. Nah, not yet, not yet. And that's why the wealthy always keep their money in the markets because you don't have to pay taxes on it as long as it's working in the markets. It's what's called realized gains. In other words, well, once you cash it out. All right, once you cash it out, all right, like every, so that's the problem with me. I'm a Forex trader and I'm a swing trader. So every week I cash out my trades no matter what, every Friday. Yeah, well, I make gains every week, right? Well, I got to pay taxes on every single one of those gains every single fucking week. Whereas these rich fucks, <clears throat> they have so much money that they're allowed to do, well, not allowed to, they have the ability to just keep their money in the markets forever. They keep enough money with them to do what they want. You know, so say you're a 
I don't see you got a hundred million dollars. All right, you keep about five, ten million on hand in a regular bank account or something where you can get liquid. In other words, you have access to the money in a, a liquid manner right away when you want the money. Yeah, but the other forty million, I said a fifty million dollar guy, right? Anyway, the other forty million, boom, you leave that in the market. And it just keeps making you money and money and money and money and money. Yeah, and you never have to pay taxes on it till you cash it out. And that's what these rich people do. Yeah, they just give their money to Fidelity or give their money to some hedge fund and just say, yeah, just go on, man. Just keep making me money. So technically, you're making money all the time and you've never paid taxes on any of it. Right? Uh, of course, if you ever do cash it out, you will pay taxes on it. Yeah, but these rich people, what they do is they just hand the account down to their kids. Yeah, so the kids just take a little, pay taxes, you know, like, and they just leave the bulk of their money in the markets that they never get taxed on. You get it? All right. Um, that's how it works. If you're rich enough to be able to do that, right? Like, I'm not like that. Right? Most of us aren't, but that's how these guys do it. Right? They'll do stuff like just buy bonds. So really rich people, I'm talking mega. Now, like your Bill Gates types and those guys, Zuckerbergs and that, they buy American bonds. And what they do is they just keep rolling them over, rolling them over, rolling them over, rolling them over. When the, when the bond issue comes in, bang, they tell their broker, buy me more. Yeah, so their money just perpetually stays in the market making money. Those are called coupon clippers. Google coupon clippers. Uh, Google bonds coupon clippers. That's what Bill Gates and Zuckerberg and Tezos not Tezos, uh, the fucking guy, Bezos, the fucking Amazon dude. I don't remember what his name is, but that's what they do. They just keep rolling over their bond money over and over and over so it stays in the market. They never get taxed on it. Yeah. All right, so anyway, let's get on with this story, though. Fuck, I'm getting you guys deep into taxation in America. Look! All right, so An Chong Nam, a tax professor at Kangnam University, believes that it is realistically difficult for the government to know about every crypto transaction. No, don't worry. America did it. You'll figure it out. It seems like the NTS took a practical approach in categorizing gains from crypto asset trading as miscellaneous assets. Bad. All right. So for now, if you're in South Korea and you're an actual citizen, oh, you guys are good to go. Oh, you guys are just living high on the hog, aren't you? Oh, you're just having a good old time over there, aren't you? Oh, yeah. All those gains you got last year from your Bitcoin, your Litecoin, your Ethereum. Laughing your asses off, huh? Well, look, look. For now, you're good. But let's get real. So I don't blow sunshine up anyone's ass. Let's get real. It looks like yeesh, amendments are being discussed to that law. So look, look. And I tell you right now, if you're a foreigner, well, you're already feeling the brunt. You're already feeling the carnage. <laughs> so look, but that's how it goes in South Korea. That's their tax laws. That's our tax laws. I've been talking taxes, taxes, taxes. I know that ain't the sexy shit, but that's important, right? Like when hedge funds get here and and want to want to enter the space, well, they're going to ask themselves, you know, which tax regime do I want to enter? If I'm a multi-billion dollar hedge fund, I don't have to open my hedge fund here in America. If I have a better tax regime over there in the UK, South Korea, yeah, regulatory arbitrage, I'll open my office over there and be under their regulatory standards. Yes, Google regulatory arbitrage. And so, for right now, if you're a, if you're a South Korean, you stay in South Korea. And, uh, huh, good to go. All right, look, look, lastly, bug, chain analysis, Gradwell. Institutions will soon get comfortable with compliance. Yes, here comes the money, brothers. Here comes our money. Oh, yeah. That's what it's all about. I mean... Told you guys, like, you know, these institutions can't come get this stuff till it's regulated. They're not allowed. You know what I mean? If I'm a hedge fund manager, I'm not allowed to buy VeChain right now. Of course I see all the onboardings. <laughs> of course I see it's a legitimate company with legitimate partnerships. For fuck's sakes, the Chinese government shilling it. Yeah, but under American law, you're not allowed to buy that stuff for your clients. Nope, because it's not regulated and, you know, here yet. You're not allowed to do that. I mean, I guess you could probably, I mean, you could go to another jurisdiction where they allow you, but here you're not allowed. And that's why when people ask me, like, when's all coin season? When's all coin season? Yeah, when it's regulated. That's when these guys will come buy it. They're not allowed. And it's not like the movies 
you know, Wolf of Wall Street, where you see this guy just breaking every rule in the book. Fuck that. They don't do that. Right? They don't, real guys don't do that. They don't have to do that. We make billions of dollars. I don't need to make more. Right? The Wolf of Wall Street guy, remember, he was a poor fuck. And so he did what he had to do to make that money. But most of these kids on Wall Street are guys who have hedge funds and that. Yeah, they come from rich families. They, they, they don't scam. You know, they don't. You know, their parents are billionaires. They already have billions. So they don't. To them, this their hedge fund is like like how a regular person would own like a, a corner store or a. You know, a little restaurant, you know, it's no big deal. So, um, what am I trying to tell you? So, compliance, right. So now, institutions will soon get comfortable with the compliance. Because that's what they care about. They don't want problems. It's not, believe me, man, that Wolf of Wall Street shit is a bunch of, well, that was a true story, but that's just because he was so egregious, they made a, a movie about him. But that's not how things really work in the inst- in the financial world. These guys are rich guys that make billions of dollars. And <clears throat> uh, they don't give a shit. Like, they want to come get some crypto. But if they can't get it, well, you're not hurting them. They make billions already. In fact, they're doing crypto space a favor by coming here. Well, it's not a favor. They're greedy fucks. So they're coming here for that straight cash, homie. But look, look. You know. And uh, so institutions will soon get comfortable with compliance. Let's read on. Building from the ground up. Oh, so, wait a second. Oh. Building from the ground up. One second. One of the main developments of 2019... which brought in investors and dollars, was the rise of BOND. I've been telling you about this since 2018, brothers. The rise of BOND, the institutional investor. Derivatives saw much fervor created around them. With the CME stepping up its game and the Intercontinental Exchange ICE launching its digital assets platform, BACT. So much happened on the institutional front that one would have forgotten that an ETF was still not approved. It's true. It's true. And I'll tell you, well, let's move on. Uh, Digital, or sorry, despite severe, hold on, let me calm down. (laughs) Got excited when I was banged about the institutions there. (laughs) Ah! Just got a little excited there. Look, look, brothers, when you're a market killer, you get excited when you hear some market killing music, <laughs> music, uh, information. Look, so much happened on the institution front that one would have forgotten that an ETF was still approved. Despite several companies launching crypto divisions and signaling to the rest that digital assets are going to be a priority and Wall Street turning more bullish than ever to Bitcoin, things are just getting started. Dang on right. Bye. Just getting started. Remember this. We only have the backed futures, the CME futures. Backed futures physically settled. CME futures cash settled. Oh, and then also backed came out with the options in December. I'd like to know how those options are going. I haven't seen any news about that. I wonder why. I hope it wasn't a flop. And then we're going to have CME options uh, this month, right? And then I think this month on the 20th, isn't it? On the 20th, I think we're going to have backed options ethereum futures aren't we something like that or they said q1 at least i remember i don't i don't exactly remember the date but q1 and so all these things are coming it's coming and so yeah we kind of forgot about the etfs i haven't forgotten but you know what i mean it takes the pain of not having an etf away when you see all these futures and swaps and options and stuff getting built right all right as a market guy anyway it does so despite several companies launching crypto divisions and signaling to the rest that digital assets are going to be a priority uh, and Wall Street turning more bullish than ever to Bitcoin, things are just getting started. Chainalysis chief economist, Philip Gradwell, stated that these are merely a foundation stones being set. The foundations, the infrastructure, brothers, 
That's what we talk about here, the infrastructure. These guys can't come here without the regulated, insured infrastructure, right? In an exclusive interview with Am Crypto, Gradwell stated that this year was more of an introductory year for institutions to help them get familiar with digital currencies. He means 2019 was a, uh, the thing, was the, institu- was the introductory year. Two key examples, Backed and Fidelity's digital assets dedicated arm, caught his eye in the infrastructure setup for institutional money coming into, this, into crypto. Exactly. Exactly. Like I told you. Fuck. Like I told you. Institutions aren't coming here to fucking trade on Kraken. They're not going to be on Bitwise, Bitfinex. Or sorry, Bitwise is a different thing. Bitfinex, Bitmax, Coinbase. Nah, dog. Charles Schwab ain't going to be fucking investing on Coinbase. <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. JP Morgan isn't going to have their trading desk <laughs> trading over Kraken. But, oh, but I tell you what, will they, will, they, will they point their trading desk at Bact? Of course they will. Bact owns the New York Stock Exchange. Wow, my bad. The company that owns Bact runs the New York Stock Exchange. ICE, that controls Bact, owns the New York Stock Exchange. Are they going to put their money on Fidelity? Of course, fuckstick. Fidelity has more money than them. <laughs> a lot more. Right? Trillions of dollars under management. But this year's going to be good, brothers. I'm going to tell you something right now. Fidelity is going to unleash this year. You saw how we read it. I read it to you last week, right? Uh, Fidelity's heading on over there to Europe, they said. Oh, yeah. They're about to do a fucking global takeover. I'm telling you. When Fidelity comes with all their funds, their 401ks, their IRAs, their retirement funds, their kids' college funds, and just other funds, mutual funds and other funds of this crypto space, <sighs> oh my gosh, that's the true, that's, that's the tsunami you're waiting for. That's the tsunami we're waiting for. You know, it, well, a piece of it, a big, big piece of it. And so, anyway, I'm getting excited. And so, a dedicated arm caught his eye in the instructions, right? Set up for institutional money coming into crypto. Bye! This is the year of institutional money coming into crypto. It'll be a trickle at the beginning. Q1, Q2, Q3. No, Q1, Q2, just a trickle. But I expect we should have some more champion nations. Look. Well, this show turned out to be a little better than I thought. I thought I was just going to read this shit and bounce. Bye! Let me show you. Bye! See the champion nations? We expect, I expect that these, this, this list will get a little bit longer. Look, look, a little bit longer, brothers. Bye. And I expect the United States to be on this motherfucker by June. Remember this. Remember, don't ever forget. The European Union and America, oh, they don't like that Mark Zuckerberg thing. They do not like that. <laughs> they do not like that Libra coin. And they want to get regulated before his coin comes out. Well, he said his coin's coming out in June this year. Well, look, I don't want to put my hopes in politicians because they're a bunch of fuck-ups. But let me just say, they really hate Mark Zuckerberg. Like, they really hate Facebook. And they're probably going to make an extra effort. (laughs) Do you understand what I'm saying? Politicians talk a lot of shit, but they really hate Mark Zuckerberg. Look what they did to Mark Zuckerberg in Europe. Um, Right, put that, put that thing on that. That Facebook isn't, that you're allowed to tell Facebook whether you, oh, and Google. Oh, and they fucked over Google. Yeah. Europe doesn't like Google and Facebook, right? They did that thing where you're not allowed to sell people's data. Um, There's a law, like a law, a law, motherfucker. You're not allowed to sell the data. And uh, European citizens are allowed to opt out of their data getting sold. Um, Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty wild. What does that have to do with crypto? I have a good question. Oh, oh, what what that has to that's there we go. I I lost it for a second. What that has to do is crypto is Zuckerberg said he's coming out in June with his thing. These guys are working overtime to make sure that they come out with regulation before him. Which when they do, fine. That'll allow the institutional investors to know what they have to deal with and bang, come right off into this space. <sighs> I've said it a hundred times, I'll say it again. Thank you, Mark Zuckerberg. Thank you, Mark Zuckerberg. Thank you, Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> uh, not to mention what Xi Jinping said. 
you can't be left behind now. You got to regulate and get going. China's coming. Good luck. I know China is more blockchain, not Bitcoin, but that's fine. Institutional investor involvement in cryptocurrency in 2019 has been primar primarily about getting the infrastructure in place. That's what we've been talking about. Well, that's what I've been talking about since 2018. That's what we talk about here. Infrastructure in place, motherfucker. Without infrastructure, they can't come get it. I've told you this already. Like the, the, these warriors, these these crypt, these institutions, they're warriors. It's an army. It's a war. Well, each army has different kind of guys, right? You got your grunt, your soldier with the gun. You send them off to fight in the in the trenches. You got your your tanker. Right, the guy who drives the tank, boom, boom, blowing shit up. And then you got your Air Force pilot, <whistles> bomb, bomb, bombing shit from the sky. And then you got your sniper, bing, 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 picking off motherfuckers from a mile away. All of those guys create one army, and you need all of them. And that's the same way with investing. In the investing world, well, it's like an army. If I'm a for if I'm a uh, a futures guy, well, I don't know how to trade options, just like an army. If I'm a tanker, well, I don't know how to fly a fucking jet, a jet fighter. If I'm a jet fighter, well, I don't know how to snipe someone. If I'm a sniper, you know, I don't know how to drive a tank, right? So you need to give them the vehicles they know how to do to wage the war. Oh, yes. And the war is coming to crypto. And that's why we need the buying infrastructure in place. Who are the warriors in the crypto space, Shamari? Let me tell you about them. Futures guys, bang. Swaps guys, bang. Derivatives guys, bang. Options guys, bang. What else we got? What else we got? What else we got? Oh, yeah. Oh, fund. Oh, and then all the fund managers mutual funds, retirement funds, uh, kids' college savings funds guys, fidelity, bang. All those are the different weapons, the different warriors. Once you have those vehicles, well, now a man can come and wage war. <laughs> if I'm a futures guy, I can't wage war with options. I don't know how. I'll get killed. <laughs> right? Uh, that's how markets are, right? We're all specialists. I'm a Forex trader. If you give me an options platform, you say, Shamari, trade, here's $100,000. Trade me options. I mean, I know how they work. I mean, I know how to read markets and stuff, but would I feel comfortable taking your money and saying I'm going to make you money? No. But if you're like, Shamari, here's 100 grand. Trade forks for me. Pfft, all right, fuck stick. How much money you want? Let's go. I'll fucking make you all the money you want, asshole. Easy. Because that's my weapon. That's my thing. Bang, bang. That's how I kill in the, mili in the military. In this, in this space. I'm a forex trader. And that's how it works in all markets. You're a specialist in your field. Just like any army. Yeah, the tanker drives a tank. The fighter pilot flies the fighter jet. The sniper snipes, and the fucking grunt, he gets in there and battles, you know, face to face. And in the end, well, you win the war. So look, a major concern for the traditionalists in the cryptocurrency market is price discovery. Oh, price discovery. We've talked about it here a, a million times. If you don't know what that is, go to investopedia.com and Google price discovery. I mean, search price discovery. Yes. Price discovery is going to be one of those little tutorial things that I put. In that tutorial section, I'm going to start making. With institutions coming in with their fat checkbooks and deep pockets, the dollar effect on Bitcoin's price would prove to be calamitous. But Gradwell eased those concerns by stating that the small but growing volumes are unlikely to have impacted price discovery. Right? In other words, the big dogs aren't here yet, so there isn't any price manipulation. We still have a good price discovery because they're not here yet. It's true. Like, look. When these gazillionaires get here, there's probably going to be a bunch of crap that goes on at the beginning. But but once so many of them are here, you can't fuck with the markets anymore. Anyway, I'm, I'm not going to get into that. Institutions have long been wary of the cryptocurrency industry for its volatility. But more importantly, for its regulatory issues. And that's what it is. It's not the fucking volatility. This crypto nerd doesn't know what he's talking about. We love volatility. As traders, as investors, we love volatility. We thrive off of volatility. If the prices aren't moving, well, how am I going to make fucking money if it's like this? Yeah. So we love volatility, but bang. They're not coming here because of regulatory issues. 
Like I said, these guys make billions. They're very safe and sound. They're not going to do anything outside of the rules. And once those regulatory issues are solved, bye, they'll be right on the way. So the approval of CME and CO... How long is this? I've been yapping, yapping, that's why. The approval of CBOE and CME futures in 2017 did pacify some fears. But those came back in the ICO wars of 2018. Gradville stated that with infrastructural growth and compliance, institutions will get more comfortable. Proper institutions, compliant institutions, bang, and infrastructure, will get more comfortable with compliance as well. And as the same, will be beneficial for the market. Of course, that's the money. That's what we're waiting for. That's what this whole channel is about. That's what this whole channel is about. Waiting for the infrastructure to be built for the institutions to come get back our cryptocurrency warehouses, which are filled with working product, revenue generating product. Look, he stated, now that the infrastructure is in place, well, still growing, we expect institutional volume to come as long as they can get comfortable with the compliance and market risks of cryptocurrency. But, exactly, that's what they need. That's what, Shamari, why isn't my crypto going up? Shamari, VeChain, we just onboarded Walmart. Why isn't it going up? They're not comfortable yet. You think those institutions don't know that Walmart is kicking ass? All these institutions, they have analysts. Their analysts have been analyzing this whole market. Oh, they know that your VeChain, your IOTA, your Stellars, your Singularity Net, your Factum. No, they, they all know. But they're not allowed to come get it yet. Not allowed. Not until... The regulatory issues, oh, let's bang it again. Bang! Not until the regulatory issues are solved. But once we solve those regulatory issues, fuck, fuck sticks. <laughs> That's what we're all about. Bang! Yes. Here comes our tsunami, right? Aye, brothers. Look! This will be a net positive for the market, obviously. So the Security Exchange Commission SEC in the past year has seen several key regulatory decisions. Rejecting two key... Ah, oh, fuck all that. But look, so that's how it's going down, brothers. That's how it's going down. Institutions are starting to feel comfortable. Obviously, obviously. This is what I've been talking to you about since 2018. They're feeling comfortable. Wow, 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 wow. Hold on, hold on. Let's calm down. The, the infrastructure is being built, which is making them feel more comfortable. Regulations are coming online, which allows them to get here. Remember, you can have all the instruments you want. Uh, unless it's regulated, they can't come here. And the regulations coming in, and then, bang, that's going to give us our money, our inflow. And that will be, bang, a net positive for the market. So, let's do how we do, brother. That's a little bit of bang, bang. Look, look, Burks Spaghetti drops. Bang, brother. Love you, brother. See you, brother. Bang. Yes. Jim, Jin, everybody, see you, brother. Bang, what's he? Investor and entrepreneur at Crypto Net Worth. Your wish is our command. Enriching your life with commentary about futurism, tech, politics, blockchain, and more. All right, buddy. Bang. Look, look, DP. So, brother. Love everybody, see you, brother. Bang. What else we got? We got everybody, actually. I saw everybody earlier. Look, look. Mikio, V Chain is my thing. Whole, oh wait, hold on, let me read this. V Chain is my thing. Hold others, but they are just specs. We can agree and disagree. Okay, don't be a crybaby and straight with my view. Don't like it. Well, tough. All right, Mikio, bang. Good call on the V Chain, brother. Look, look, X Nilo, hiker, loves travel, animal lover, tech investor in finance. Blockchain enthusiast since 2017. Bye. Yeah. Oh, he's got the V-chain. Yeah. Look, look, wise choice. Wise choice, X and L. Look, look, Papa Doc. <laughs> Papa Doc. Hold on, first of all. Look, look. Bang. See you, brother. Papa Doc said, quote of the year. Straight cash, homie. Straight cash. That's what we're doing in this market. I mean, what the fuck are you doing here? I mean, why are you putting your money out there if you're not here for straight cash? Like, what? You know, so the CEO thinks you love him? Like, fuck that. I'm here for the money. VeChain will make a lot of people rich in the future. It's going to mint many, many millionaires. If I can help it, well, I'm going to tell you it'll mint many millionaires. And if I can help it, I'm going to add to that number. Look, I ain't shilling, but I give you my opinion. And if you're smart enough, well, 
I'm a 19 investor, fuck stick. You should probably listen. Look, look. Zena. Love you, girl. See you, girl. Bye. That's one of Poppy's crew. She said, good luck buying boss. Her boss, that's Poppy. In their, 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 their Tron world. Look, look, Stian. Love you, girl. See you, girl. Bye. Yeah. And there's the ringleader himself, Poppy. <laughs> Bang! Why is she? Why is she telling you good luck? I've always wanted to get one of to mine. To mine Bitcoin. Anyway, I don't know what he means. I hate when they do this. Replying to do do do. So you should, if I press this button, well, you see how it says replying to. Well, it should show me what he's replying to. Does it? Oh, it. Oh my ass! I'm stupid. I didn't see that before. All right, all right, all right. Let me shut up. You guys know I don't know about social media and everything. <laughs> I'm just a trader. Look, look, son of a bitch. Bye, look, <laughs> bye, look, <laughs> bye. Wrong cast. Love you, brother. See you, brother. Bye. Yes. Welcome to 2020, brother. Oh yeah, we're gonna rock this fucking hard. Bye. You get an extra one for that. Yes. Transformational killer bee. Look, look. He said, from worker bee to killer bee. That's the spirit, brother. Love your brother. See you, brother. Bye. Robbie Hardaway. Love your brother. See you, brother. Bye. Esoteric Trading Solutions. Bye. Oh, here they are. Ben Amps. Love your brother. See you, brother. Bye. Oh, killer bee. Van Breeded. <laughs> Michelle. Van Breeded. Yes, tonight's not a, a Van Breen and night. Look, look, love your brother, see your brother. Bye. His mom, his mom's chilling. Yes, his mom had a festive holiday. She's taking a break. She's not yelling about what he's doing downstairs tonight. <laughs> not tonight. Look, look, Radster, love your brother, see your brother. Bye. It's her brother from Prague. Stefan, long time no see, brother. Love your brother, see your brother. Bye. Yeah, what is he talking about? V chain. Happy 2020. Let's go. Oh, let's the good times roll. I'll give out 10,000. Oh, one of these things. All right. So look. Crypto Carlito. Love you, brother. See you, brother. Bye. Good shit. Here's to a prosperous new year. Bang. Yes. Here's to a prosperous new year, brothers. Look, look. It's only going up from here. There ain't no more down. Look, look. One more. One more. Spy lady. Love you, girl. See you, girl. Bang. And Kong. Love you, brother. See you, brother. Bang. All right. Let's get out of here. Bang. Look, look. Bang. Look, look. All right, Happy New Year's, everybody. Look. All right, so we had a great show for you today. Seeing as I had to scrape the bottom of the barrel to get this motherfucker out. <laughs> but it ended up being pretty good. We talked about some serious fucking taxation laws here. <laughs> That's what I love about this show. I have the stories I'm going to tell you. But then when the fuel kicks in, I'm like, look, look. I'm just going to tell these fucks about some shit. Because <laughs> I know you don't know. So I like telling you guys about shit. Look, look. So the Iron Network. 15 hours downtime. Look. No big deal. That's why they the quarter side thing, they were already in they were already starting working on that actually since last year. Well, obviously it's only two days since this year, so they were working on it already. And um that's the I, I read to you guys before about IOTA. That's the big complaint. IOTA is decentralized in that all the nodes and all that stuff, they all make their own calculations and you know, it's not blocks. It's not a blockchain, but they all validate stuff and stuff. But then the final validator is that coordinator thing. They all send their information to that coordinator. And well, if that coordinator's down, well, it doesn't matter what all you guys calculated out there. The blockchain doesn't know that it happened. And so that's a the quarter side thing is about. We read about it. You know, it's going to truly decentralize IOTA. And things like this will never happen again. Like the quarter side thing, if something happens over here and it fucks up, all right, bang, uh, transactions will be, you know, validated over there. And then, you know, and they all, it, all, it all updates in that. But it's not just one thing, you know, like, oh, this doesn't work. The whole network is down. No, no. Uh, it's truly decentralized. All right. And then. Crypto profits not taxable in, in South Korea. So, while well, we read, and I went on a big U.S. tax law rant, 
from the investor perspective. That's my, that's my, <laughs> that's how I got to do it. Not taxable in South Korea under the current law, current law. And we saw that they're going to change those laws. But, um, and we saw that the, <laughs> the foreigners are already getting, bang, bang. They're already getting bit slapped. So we'll see how it goes in South Korea. I'll keep our eye on it. You know how it goes. And then finally, institutions are getting comfortable now that there's compliance. Exactly. Exactly what I've been telling you. Look, these guys, first of all, they can't come here. They're not legally allowed to come and buy your V-Chain. They're not legally allowed to come buy your Cardanos, your Iotas, your, your Stellars, your Factums, whatever. Not until there's compliance and regulation. Compliance and regulation. But they're getting comfortable. And that's why we saw the trickle. That's why we saw the trickle. Well, not only because of the regulations, but also because of institutional grade quality stuff. Backed. All right. Uh, what was the other one? Oh, let me look. <laughs> All right. They're feeling more comfortable now. You know, because they got things like backed, which is controlled by uh, ICE, who controls the New York Stock Exchange. They're feeling more comfortable with the CME, right? The the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, which is where they trade their derivatives every day. So coming slowly this year, and I think we're going to onboard a lot of institutional grade stuff and institutions. I hope so. That's what I hope. So, oh, and that's it. All right. So, whoa, let's chill it and kill it. Let's get you back to your wives alive. Subscribe below. Press the bell. You get automatically notification when I do the show. The greatest show on earth. The greatest show in the multiverse. Look, look. My name is Shamar Kwok. Love talking, love, money, love talking money. Love talking crypto. This is the favorite time of my day. So, look. Thank you for having me in your home. And until tomorrow, I don't know what kind of show we're going to have because there's probably not going to be many updates on these websites. But, look. We'll scrape something together and we'll see you tomorrow. Until then, my name is Shamar Clark. Look, look. Subscribe below. Press that little bell right there. Bang! Smart clock, always on duty. Bang! Yeah! Over and out.